Hey guys, in this video I'm going to give you a solution to the whiteboard angular baseball. So recall what's going on here is we have a, um, a batter who's hitting a baseball at a height 1.4 meters above the ground. We have an initial speed of the baseball and we have the mass of the baseball. And part A is what is the angular momentum in the baseball when it's hit relative to home plate. So in other words, we have to define what the center of the coordinate system is. We're finding the angular momentum about that center. And we're also assuming the baseball is a point particle. So that's good. We don't have to consider any rotation of the baseball about this point because if the baseball is a point, it can only rotate about the, um, the origin of the axis, which is relative to home plate. And, and we also want to find the direction of the angular momentum. So the angular momentum of a point particle is simply r cross p, where r is the radius vector relative to the origin and p is the momentum vector of the object that's moving. So because we want the uh, direction in the end, we could use the right-hand rule, but I could also just write r and p as vectors and then actually take the cross product. So that's what I'm going to do. So the radius vector is 0, h, 0. Uh, that's the x component of the radius vector, the y component, and the z component. And of course, the y component is just the height of the baseball. The momentum vector is simply in the x direction m times v because the uh, velocity is entirely in the x direction and then zero in the y direction and zero in the z direction. So the cross product is just given by this formula. You can get this formula by, for instance, using the determinant trick, or you can simply memorize it, or you can look it up in your favorite textbook. But we can immediately see that although the formula is complicated, because there's so many zeros in the vectors, a lot of these terms are going to just vanish. So for instance, rx is 0. So that means anywhere where there's an rx, I can cross it out. So right there and right there. Also, wherever there's an rz, it's going to be 0. So that one goes away and that one goes away. Looking over at the momentum, py is 0. That doesn't help us pz is 0, that does help us, that makes this term go away. And we're left with only one remaining term in this vector. And the answer is simply 0, 0 in the x and y directions, and negative h, m, v in the z direction. Uh, therefore, the direction of the angular momentum is into the page, which you could check by using the right-hand rule as well. For part B, we want to again uh, find the angular momentum, but now when the ball is at point B, same velocity and actually the same momentum vector, right? Because the momentum is still only in the x direction. But the position vector right here is going to be from the origin out to point B. So actually, because I did this, using the cross product and the definition of the vectors, it's actually really easy to write that vector at this new position. The new x-coordinate is simply d, uh, the y-coordinate is still h, and we're still in the plane of the board, so the z-coordinate is 0. So now I'm going to redo this calculation using this position vector and this momentum vector. So here's that, uh, those two vectors, and here's the cross product. Again, let's try to see what terms in here are going to be 0. Uh, we have rz is 0. So anywhere there's an rz, I can just cross it out. Uh, I have that py is 0. Uh, there's a py right there. And I also have that pz is 0, so that's 0, and that's 0. So actually, I get the exact same um, thing as I got before, and that is that just this term survives. And the angular momentum is apparently the exact same as it was for part A. Now, should we be disturbed by that? We have that the angular momentum uh, at point A is HMV, the angular momentum at point B is HMV. Now I'm um, getting rid of the direction and vectors. But of course, this process we can think of um, when the ball is initially hit as LA and then and the ball sometime later as LB and we ignored the force of gravity we knew that because the ball traveled in a straight line and the ball wouldn't travel in a straight line if the force of gravity was actually acting on it so we have a case where LA minus LB is zero and that's essentially saying the change in the angular momentum is zero and that happens when you have conservation of angular momentum which is exactly what we would have expected for an object traveling without any external forces acting on it. So that's good. 
And if we want to just finish that calculation, if we put in HMV into our calculator, we get 10.92 meters squared kilograms per second. The uh, units for angular momentum are just a combination of this particular SI unit. There's no, no special name for the unit of angular momentum. So for part C, we're saying, okay, that actually doesn't make a lot of sense for the baseball to travel completely in a straight line. So if we include the effects of gravity, it turns out the ball will fall 26 centimeters. So this little distance right here is 26. And actually, I calculated that 26 centimeters. That's actually the correct amount based on how fast the ball is falling. Uh, once we learn about projectile motion, you'll be able to make that um, calculation work as well. Uh, but now, what is the angular momentum of the baseball in this case if the speed does not change? So this is still going to be our velocity uh, v, that is uh, 52 meters per second. We want to find out what the angular momentum is now. Well, if we want to stay with our current approach, we need to find what the new position vector is and what the new momentum vector is. So let me just draw those in. So the position vector is actually very easy to find because we essentially know all the triangular distances in this picture. The x position is simply d as it was in part b, and the y position is simply h minus h prime. So it's just the distance from there to the bottom, and again we're in the plane so the uh, z component is zero. So the momentum vector is going to be a little bit trickier because it's right here and it now has an angle downwards with respect to the horizontal. So if I'm going to write this in the coordinate system given by this, I'm going to have to work a little bit. Essentially, I'm going to need to figure out what that angle right there is. So I'm going to redraw this picture a little bit. Um, the problem is that this curved line here is sort of screwing up what I want to do. So I'm going to redraw this picture with this triangle, that triangle, and a triangle right at the top here. So here's my triangles. That's point B. The angle I'm interested in is right here. And now you can see that that angle is the same as this angle right there. But luckily, I know everything there is to know about this triangle, specifically uh, that distance is d, and this little distance right here is h prime. I can take the tangent of that angle right there, which is again the same as that one, is going to be h prime divided by d. And that angle turns out to be 1.24 degrees. Very small, but definitely something that we need to include in our, in our uh, considerations. Okay, so now that we know that angle, and we know that this is the vector p, we should be able to work out what uh, px is and what py is. Uh, px is simply p cosine theta because it's the adjacent side uh, to the angle. And uh, py is minus p sine theta because it's the opposite to the angle. And of course, p is simply mv. So when I actually take this cro cross product, I'm going to put m and v in there. So there's my equation, which defines my cross product. Let's check to see what things are zero. There's certainly fewer of them now. Um, Rz is zero, so I can make that guy and that guy go away. Uh, Pz is zero, uh, so that's this guy, and I think that's it. So what's left are combinations of Rx, Py, and Ry, Px. And for the x component, uh, I get zero. For the y component, I get uh, minus that guy times that guy, so that minus sign cancels that minus sign, positive sign. And for this guy down here, I get this same thing, but with a positive sign instead of a negative sign, and RYPX, which is right there. Certainly a much more complicated expression. But if I start plugging in numbers for these things, I get the following. Uh, 2.03 kilogram meters squared per second in the uh, y direction and negative 10.92 kilogram meters uh, squared per second. So this has changed a little bit and this is now not zero. And I asked for the angular momentum, so I'm just going to find the magnitude of this thing. And I get 11.10 kilograms meters squared per second. So if you recall on the previous slide, we got 10.92, so actually rounded um, to four sig figs, we got the exact same angular momentum um, in the z direction. But this additional angular momentum in the y direction comes from the action of gravity pulling down on the ball. So gravity is applying a torque and is making the ball go downwards. If we knew how long this process took, 
which we could find via projectile motion. We could figure out how much torque gravity was acting on the ball with by just taking this angular momentum and dividing by the time. But the effect is that the torque of gravity on the ball causes the angular momentum to be slightly larger than if we had ignored gravity, um, we would have kept this same angular momentum. Okay, great. Thank you guys for watching. This has been a solution to um, angular baseball, and I hope I will see you next time.